of existence. Then we have a future. Because then, and only then, we take full responsibility for who we are. Hello there everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video we are going to take a look at just how easily I have created this abstract render you can see right now. It took me around 30 minutes to create this, if not even less. And creating this scene is super easy, even though it, it might look a little bit more complex, but trust me, it isn't. So if you are a beginner, you are more than welcome to stay around and follow along with us. But before we go into the actual tutorial, I want to give a word to our own store. So, if you're looking to get your hands on excellent 3D assets, specifically designed for video games but not exclusive to that, then make sure to visit store.mitrek.com. Alright, now let's move on with the tutorial. Alright, so I'm starting off with a simple cylinder added into the scene. I'll make sure that the origin point sits at the bottom of the mesh. I'm using the cylinder to create that main abstract techy kind of pipe from which the water is flowing out from. This step is pretty easy, you just freestyle a bit with this shape here. I'm just extruding and inserting faces around, nothing more. Right now I'm beveling all the sharp edges because I don't want any perfectly sharp edge in my object. And right now I'm simply using some loop cuts added in here, beveling them to create faces and extruding those inwards, just to create some kind of abstract details in here, and then beveling them uh, as usual. Alright, so now that, that I've taken care of that, I'm adding a new plane in, into the scene. This plane will be our backdrop. So I'm simply extruding this edge upwards and then beveling the intersection until I get something that looks like a photography backdrop. Right now I'm adding a bunch of loop cuts into the mesh and that's because I want to have a bunch of square faces throughout my object. I'm now using the select random face feature and then just extrude those outwards. This will create an interesting abstract pattern across our backdrop that, uh, that just adds a bit more detail into the scene. I'm creating a simple black material for this backdrop and then I also create another black material for the main pipe. Don't forget to add some beveling to, to the backdrop. So right now I'm creating a plane and I'm going to use this as our meta ball emitter. The meta ball is the is the object that's gonna create that interesting fluid like shape for us. I want my animation to be 10 seconds, so I'm setting up my timeline to be 30 frame 200 frames long since I'm rendering rendering in 30 frames per second. I'm now creating a water material, which is nothing else than a principal material with transmission set to 1 and roughness near 0. Make sure to add some Brownian movement to the particle system. Uh, this will add some randomness to the movement and you'll get a much nicer result. I make sure that my particle system stops emitting any new particles around the 150 frame mark. I want to give the particles enough time to fly and get out of the frame that will ensure me that I'm able to get a seamless loop. I'm now improving the lighting situation, so I'm adding a new area light in the scene and positioning to it to light from above. This will create some interesting color and highlights, especially in, on our glass slash water material. I'm playing around with the color and strength as should you. Different scenes require different lighting, so make sure to experiment and get the perfect result for you. Right now I'm using another plane which I'm sizing up by 4 and then just add a bunch of loop cuts. Now I'm, now I'm adding a wireframe modifier onto this plane to create this 3D grid. I make sure to add a subdivision surface modifier on top of the wireframe one. This will, let, this will let me control how many squares my grid will have. Alright, so I'm now creating two cubes. I'll use one of them to add a particle system onto the other one and create this weird but interesting cube object that has a lot of small cubes on top of it. I'll make this into a single object and now use it to add another particle system onto our backdrop. This will add some more detail to our scene and background. I will also create a new material for those cubes. I'm obviously gonna make it black since I want to be in the same color scheme. Feel free to play around with the materials, be creative and experiment. 
and you'll end up getting some results you like but you would have never thought of trying in the first place. Alright, I'm now creating another cylinder which is going to play the role of some thin pipes flowing around the frame. I'm adding some in the back, some in the front. This is important to, in order to give your scene some proper depth. Those pipes coming in from the camera will play a big compositional role. I'm using them to pretty much create a guiding lines that will help the viewer focus on what's important, and that is the main focal point. I'm creating a new material for these thin pipes as well, and I'm making it really shiny and black. I'm now creating a plane which is going to sit in front of the camera. This is a weird and interesting effect I've done in my original render uh, that I thought was cool enough to share. So I'm basically adding a glass material to this, so transmission is set to 1, and then just play around with the roughness and you'll get a kind of blurry window effect, which really brings in some cool visuals to this render. I'm grabbing those plays and putting them a bit closer to the camera, just so the depth of field will blur them out even more. Now I'm going to use a bit of the power of the curves. I'm basically creating a subtle S curve and increasing the black point to wash out the black a little bit. Another thing I've done in my original render was to add a bit of camera shake in there. Just enough to make that shot look a little bit more dynamic and less boring. The way I've done that is extremely simple. Just add a position keyframe onto your camera, open up a new graph editor window and add some noise modifier to those keyframes and that will take care of the camera shake for you. And this right here has been the whole tutorial. Good job for sticking around and finishing this little project of ours. I hope you enjoyed working along with me and being creative for around 10 minutes or so. This is all that it matters. So please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you think the content is worthy of that. And I'll see you next week.